Hey everybody, welcome back to week 11. And this week we are talking about the passion card and the fable of the princess, I don't know if you can see it, the princess of Amber. And when these cards came through, it's, I call them cards because they ultimately became a deck, but when the fables themselves came through, they, they came through in such a, a I want to say a vibrant color energy that when we look at the color of amber itself, it's very rooted in the earth. And yet the second chakra is really about movement and circulation and our feelings. And it's also based on the platform we created in that first chakra. So one of the things that happens when we look at a word like passion, I yawn when I'm reading and going into state. I'm so sorry. Okay. When we're in that state of passion, one of the things that really comes forward is that it's something that's calling us. It's a movement. It's something that's bigger than us. And in this case, the idea of, of passion also has a certain amount of compassion to it. And by that, I mean, if you look at in the fable, the princess really has a lot of compassion for others. She really, while what she's doing is a passion, right? It's through compassion that she is doing what she's doing and also in some ways standing up to her parents and her family because they're all saying, don't do this, you've got privilege, you don't have to do this. And I think we're looking at somebody who's not doing something to look good, but someone who's doing something to feel good and be good. And there's a big difference. In this moment, in this week, this is about asking yourself, if I have this passion and I have a calling to do it, you know, we used to say, are you doing it for fun and for free? Because that's the first litmus test of whether or not it's a true energetic calling. Now, when we look at this as the, the uh, princess of Amber, this is really about a princess who used where she was to fulfill her true path. Now, if we look at it that way, we're also in the third week of the orange cards. Now, what does that tell us? Remember that the third chakra is about planning and thinking and what we're, what we're going to be, uh, the path that we're taking. What, what are the steps we're going to be following? So one of the things that happens is that sometimes we can get very passionate about something, go, yes, and we'll fight about it, but then we won't really do anything about it. We kind of just want to talk and that's it. So the question becomes this week, does the rubber hit the road? Are you going to be taking action on your passion? Or is it just something you're kind of like, mm, that's going to fizzle out? So this is really about deciding what really is important to you. And so that's what we're going to be looking at this week in, the in this particular, uh, I want to say, in this, this card, in this fable. Now, the week's focus is I quietly sizzle and shine. So it's not about getting out there and shining. It's about shining internally. And I'm going to share with you the message of the week, which you'll read anyway later. But this week, we explore the possibility of transforming our lives through true passion. If you wish to inspire others, honor their opinions, but don't allow anything to step in the way of your work of service. And this becomes important because if you remember, the first card was service. So the second card was we have this calling because the second card, excuse me, fable, was the salmon chair, which was in a sense, our second chakra, our emotions. If we have value, then we can value others. So I think that when we look at how the second chakra is building internally, we can look at the idea that all of these are connected. Every story becomes a connection. And they each have an aspect of that chakra that it's representing. So as we look closer to this, and I'm gonna share with you, okay, I'm gonna share with you my tip. Um, and this, uh, 
I like the idea of the Princess of Amber. In fact, the original deck I named by the fables, but then when we went to press, it was like, that's gonna be too hard for other languages. So that's why the keyword that was originally with the fable is now, um, you know, the card, it's on the card itself. So, um, okay, mm, where am I? Okay, this goes to what I just shared with you, which is the Princess of Amber may visit you many times. Now, this is the idea of something inspirational may come into your life more than once. It's hard to describe the magic of a true calling of service. You know it when you feel it. The Princess of Amber symbolizes being authentic and risking everything to live that way. What would you give to the world if there was no material reward for you? And so that, again, is part of what I was saying in terms of, does it fit that personal test of, this is how I want to spend my time? And sometimes, and, and I know for me, this is very true, of like, spend time, you know, I've spent years writing, and I was like, oh, this is so painful, you know? And then in this last year, through taking certain, making certain choices, I ended up falling in love with the process of writing and it was years of training. So I'm really, that's where this has come from too, is that sometimes things aren't comfortable for us when we're doing it, but we do it anyway because we know the end result is important. So even though we may stumble and fall, we'll stay with it. So is this something that you're going to stay with? Is this really what your calling is? You know, it's also true for anybody in the arts, um, you know, going to an audition, right? Just because you don't get that job doesn't mean you won't get the next. But is it really about doing the work or is it about winning the admiration? And so what we're looking at is the idea of validating the internal artist, the internal, that part of us that really is of service by being creative too. Think about how, you know, and I've talked about this before in this series, someone that you greatly admire, if they had not stepped out and done their work, would it have been a loss for you? So think of your passion and the things that are important to you that way as well. All right, so obviously read the fable because once you get into the fable and you look at the different languaging, that's gonna really, that's really gonna pull out something for you. And a little tip that I do sometimes is that if you're working with, a, with the fable and you're like, I'm not getting it, something's not speaking to me, start from the end and say each word aloud. And as you start doing that, you're going to notice one or two, and you can use a highlighter, a couple of words may come out to you. They may come back to you and you go, oh my goodness. What'll happen, in that is the idea that those words then you can look up synonyms for. So for example, I'm just gonna use this as an example. I just looked down and, I, and I'm gonna use this, so let me just see. Okay, so itself, Amber, like much, hypnotizing almost was presence. Hypnotizing stood out. So go look up hypnotizing, look up the synonym, the antonym, the definition, is there a meaning in there for you that may be speaking to you under the words? And that's really how your intuition can also speak to you. So that's a good way of getting meaning out of a fable if, you're not, if it's not connecting with you. So of course I put down my first impressions because as you know me already, I can't help but do that. Um, it would appear that Amber's a saint, but she isn't. She just stands up for what she knows is right, even if that means incurring the disapproval of others. And let me tell you something, we are living in a time now where people are feeling, and I'm, this could change in a year, right? But the energetic wave is afraid of speaking up, afraid of being bullied, afraid of being called out, calling, being called names. All of these kinds of things have to be risked at this time in order to follow your dreams. So what, a couple other things that I'm going to let you look at this on your own. Remember to set your intention for each week. That's going to be a very important uh, part of this. Once you set your intention, and your intention may be, for example, in this, let's go back and look at it. Um, I quietly sizzle and shine. My intention may be to look at the parts of me 
that shine without me helping it. In other words, trying, you know, not going, hey, I'm shining, but kind of letting people see that in me. So allowing the universe to come to reflect back to me how I do that, how I put sizzle and shine. And when I put that out to the universe, then that may appear to me in various ways that are outside of my current frame of reference. Tuesday, you're going to look at the color definition. And one of the things that happens is that because amber has brown in it, it's a very grounding color. It really roots us to our emotional truth. So you're gonna look at that and you're going to notice that in the journal journey, and of course the Thursday uh, group exercise, I think it's great to do with somebody else, but that's because that's me. So I would encourage you to find other people to do the group exercise with, and of course the meditation. Please remember that when you are complete by Friday at midnight, I really encourage you to just put this down and move on to something else. Literally, if you're kind of, I didn't do it this week, let it go. And if it's 10 minutes to midnight, just read it all really quick. And even, let's say, for example, here's another idea. If you decide you're like, oh, I didn't do anything this week, take one of the sections and use the technique of reading it backwards. So read Wednesday backwards, for example, and when that word hits you, circle it, go look it up, and it'll give you the message for the week. And that is week, we were just finishing week 11, and I will see you next week. Have a great week, everyone. Bye for now.